Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Dentistry Unmasked. Dr. David Rice here with my partner in crime as usual. Hey, Dr. Pam Maragliano Muniz. What's up? You know, so many things are up. This is like a special influencer edition. So it's going to be different than our typical podcast. It's going to be different because let's be real. Influencers are busy influencing. We can't get them all here at the same time. So instead, we decided to do like a like a relay race, like a little tag team of some of in Instagram's best. Ooh, I like that. It's like Olympics baton pass from first to second to third to fourth, and it all adds up to a win. Exactly. It's sort of like it's sort of like scrolling through your favorite Instagram stories. You're like just chilling for a little bit and then on to the next. I like that. Swipe right. <laughs> That's the good one, right? I don't know if it is or not, but our, I bet our guests will tell us. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to ask them. All right. So do you want to tease everybody and tell them who's all joining us today? Yeah, I would love to. So we've got Dr. Tara Abumaboob. She's one. We've got Dr. Abdullah of the, oh my gosh. Future dentist. Future dentist. I'm sorry, Abdullah. It's like one of the best patients out there. <laughs> I know like 75,000 followers, pretty insane. Absolutely insane. And um, yeah, no, we've got Barrage, we've got Sunny. I mean, we've got quite a quite a lineup here. I think you guys are in for a treat. Yeah, I love our lineup because what we did is we went out there and we said influencers come in many shapes and forms in dentistry, strong clinical influencers who are bringing like just spectacular dentistry. And then some folks who are doing some things very differently that we know you are going to want to hear. So stick around. You don't want to miss it. Really quickly. Great friend, great colleague, someone who's like a mentor to me in this social media world, this, you know, Instagram world that we're going to be talking about today. He goes by many names, Dr. Abdullah Aziz at Future Dentist. Welcome. How are you? Oh, that, all right. That was a really, really good introduction. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling really good. You're right, Pam. It is a great day to have this conversation. Um, I'm really excited to look forward to, you know, give some insight. I appreciate uh, David for seeing me as like some sort of uh, mentor for the influential market. So yeah, I'm excited to flesh out some details and get right into it. Awesome. So 71,000 people on Future Dentists, you're doing some things right. And Pam, I'm guessing you had like a thread to follow. So what do you think? I think so. You know, it's interesting because you would think that future dentists would be about, I don't know, pre-clin and like trying to figure out, you know, getting through dental school, but your page is so much more than that. So can you tell us sort of how you sort of started it and kind of what it's turned into? Yeah, for sure. So you're hundred percent right. At first, future dentist was definitely more preclinical, finding out, you know, what each different school has in common, uh, how things, how different schools do things differently. Um, and then over the years, you know, then I sort of started to take over future dentists. And I noticed that, um, you know, we always showcase the great qualities that a school has that the dental school of life may have. What we don't really showcase is, you know, the, you know, sometimes it could be somewhat of a tragedy, you know, being more honest and frank about certain aspects in dentistry or while in dental school. And then I slowly start to see that seeing that sort of empathize with my followers, I understood that being more real is much more important than, you know, just showing, flashing everything about what dentistry is. So that's where I started to take a little bit of a detour and turn of following more sense of good humor, being more relevant in the aspects of the day-to-day -day issues that go on in clinical practices. And I tend to get a really good response. And I think that's where it kind of slowly started to shoot up more. Future Dentist obviously doesn't really correlate with too much with the name because we go to a long span of different things. For example, we go towards, you know, dental hygiene life, dental assistant life, office manager life, and as well as the dentist life. Um, and I love how the page has turned out to be because then I can show my true creativity and myself through these videos, whether I repost them, whether I make my own content or, you know, post other stories. It's a really good it makes me feel good that I'm doing the right thing of what I'm posting. 
Now I'm going to speak on behalf of all the old dentists out there that are just trying to stay relevant and post decent photos and all the things. How do you come up with these topics and how do you keep your creativity going? Because let's be honest, sometimes it's exhausting. You are a hundred percent right. And it is still exhausting to this day. Uh, where I see to find this fresh new ideas is constantly I'm on the phone through Instagram, looking through ideas 24 um, seven. And once I find an idea, I kind of like harbor in on that and, or actually hone in on that a little bit longer. And I bounce off ideas, even with my fiance, even send some stuff to David and to like my other colleagues as well, just to get some different perspectives or ideas. So say, for example, I make a video, I think it's funny. I show it to somebody else. They think it's the worst thing in the world. However, when I show it to somebody else, they might think it's just as funny as I did. So something that I did learn along the way is that posting a lot, you're not going to make everybody happy for sure. And not everybody's going to find the same sense of humor as you do. However, knowing that I think it's funny and somebody else thinks it's funny it, or, you know, can relate to that content, not even humor wise is more than enough for me to always keep working on my creativity. What topics do you think are kind of like a slam dunk? People seem to love them. And what topics like, are there topics that you're like, I won't even touch it. <laughs> uh, that's a very good question. I think the main thing that most of my followers, or I guess everybody is money, how much dentists make figuring out which part of the region dentists make, um, you know, what's their favorite procedures, finding out like understand, oh, I'm sorry, or understanding what really works in dentistry. Um, salary is definitely a big pain point in my followers. I post one video about it and then, you know, it blows up to 600,000 views and, you know, it, it's barely a lot of work. However, this is what interests my followers. Uh, recently, I posted a story saying, what is your goal this year? And I promise you, out, out of like the 400 responses, Pam, it was 75% I want to make more money. And, you know, that speaks volume because I, I don't necessarily think people are money hungry. However, I feel like they want to understand that people are going through the same struggle as they are. Um, and then a topic that isn't really something I want to touch on. It's, hmm, I, I, I think the main thing is whether <laughs> dentists are doctors. I feel it, it's very apparent that dentists are definitely doctors, uh, but it's the common section that go at each other's throats. Uh, like I said, it's easy to make the argument dentists are doctors, but you always have those outliers that leave things very vague in the comments that start sporadically going crazy. Great for content, great for views, um, but definitely a toxic environment in that aspect. I love, you know, one of the things I really love that you do, and you just mentioned it, is you're constantly serving your audience and your followers. And, and, and the page is more about what do they want than it is what do you want? I think that's a great lesson, you know, not just on social media for us on Instagram, but in our practices, right? When the more we focus on the other person who's in front of us and what matters most to them, the happier and more, you know, quote, successful, however you want to define that, you know, we, we all are together. I, I think that's a, a brilliant way to approach the page and clearly your, your audience loves it a ton. Oh, hundred percent. That's a great way to put it. And I guess that's where I, you know, going back to Pam's question, that's where I kind of like revamp my creativity, never feeling exhausted. Um, and, you know, not mind that maybe a video might not like do so well. I think that's where a lot of people start to get pushed down or look the other way or regress when their videos aren't doing so well. However, your video is really good. It's just, it needs to get to that right on audience. So that constant exposure is definitely important. So I'm hearing two things. Number one, be yourself and find content that resonates with you and things that you think are funny instead of you trying to maybe be something you're not, mm -hmm. but then also just don't give up and just keep going at it. So don't be, don't be, you know, don't necessarily decide what your value is based on the number of likes or clicks or engagement, 
just like have a good time with it and keep going. And sure enough, you'll find your tribe. Exactly. That's the main point. It's if you're always going to find self-satisfaction, this is, I, you know, with a lot of self-reflecting in life, this is in many different aspects, but especially with dentistry, it's important. Um, if your satisfaction is how other people perceive of you, you'll never, ever be happy. You'll feel exhausted. You'll have a huge mental load. And the minute you realize being successful, I think the main question also that I always think about is what success means to you. And it can't be in an external factor. It has to be something internal within. Um, and I feel like that's where I find my happiness. I know it kind of went deep in a different direction, but that was a, you know, a good segue to it. I like that though. I think that's important. Sustainability, like the way to, to win in this game is sustainability. And it's hard to, you know, fake it till you make it all day, every day. So, you know, the concept of, you know, don't chase other people, chase your best self, just get a little bit better tomorrow. Keep plugging away at it. I love it. Pam, final thoughts. Yeah. I want to hear from you, you know, like you're sitting there, you know, obviously you're constantly thinking about what you're going to put out there. What types of pages do you enjoy and what types of pages do you freaking hate? Because we all have them. <laughs> um, that's, that's really good. Uh, pages that I hate, hate is definitely a strong word, but I feel like pages that I'm not like really associated. If it's too clinical based, I guess, where, you know, there's this huge carousel of a bunch of little posts that's just hard to follow. I feel like that doesn't really get the right audience more engaged. I believe that if it's a little bit simple where it's a common procedure that a lot of people can do or they can relate it back to into their own practice, I feel like those are the type of posts that do really well. Where I get a lot of my inspirations, I guess, hmm, I feel like what I do is go on TikTok. I type in dentist humor and I just scroll away. I let it, you know, I kind of go through all the pages and I see a lot of funny content, um, even with small pages that have, you know, 20 likes. It, it's, I, I just wish that I can repost and I do repost those and I see it on my page and it goes to, again, like 100,000, 200,000 views. It's just that the, con the content is funny. It's just got to get to the right people. And um, there is this one specific page that I do like. I do find their humor really funny and they've been really consistent. Uh, they're called on Instagram and probably on TikTok, Refine Dentistry. Uh, they're a practice out in Houston, Texas. Uh, yeah, I, I really love what they do with their content because one, they involve with the dentist, two, the staff, and three, sometimes with the patients as well. Um, and then another page that I do like, uh, I want to say their name is, it's out near Philly, Smile Contour, something like that. I, I'm, I'm messing up on the name. But their content is also really well because it's really up to date with trendy things going on. So I kind of get some inspiration here and there from those kind of like content. Um, but yeah, it's mostly funny humor, making fun of dentistry a little bit. And, you know, relating it back that, hey, you know, it's not as bad as you make it in your head because everybody else is also going through it. Let's, you know, work on it together. I love it. Well, everybody follow future dentists and definitely keep an eye on Abdullah because he's a step ahead of all of us. And he definitely brightens my day when I see your post. So thank you so much for your time and your insights. And I don't know, David, I think we might ask him to come back in the future. I think we got to have him back. Abdullah, just the expression on your face as you describe this, I feel how much you love it. And I and I know that if more people loved it like you love it, um, it's no longer work. It's just a passion project that, that happens to drive some revenue and, and bring some great things in life. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, Pam. Always great seeing you. We are graced with a lot of talented people and dentistry. And, and I, and I know I can confidently say, you know, we were, we've been stalking and, and I've known fresh for a while, but we've been stalking uh, your page for a while. Um, you are one of the most talented people I've seen. You have the science, you have the skill, you have this amazing ability to showcase it on Instagram. So Faraj, welcome. We are so glad you're here with us today. 
It's a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you, David. It's always good to chat and I'm looking forward to this. So we're continuing our conversation of influence versus influencer. Do they have to be mutually exclusive or can they sort of reinforce one another? And so we wanted to pick your brain, Faraj, about this because your page is really cool. There's a lot to it. There's clinical, there's you, there's your practice. Tell us a little bit about how you kind of started your Instagram page and kind of what it's turned into. Yeah, this is a really interesting topic. Like just uh, just hearing about it excites me because it's something that I think about quite a bit. And um, for myself personally, my journey on social media has uh, significantly changed over time, right? I think initially, you know, maybe like everyone else, I was initially dabbling in it, um, trying things out, getting frustrated and then stopping for a few months and then trying things out again for a few days, getting frustrated and then stopping again. So it was uh, kind of that until um, I think for me, something shifted in my perspective or understanding of what it is that I'm trying to do on social media. And um, I started looking at it differently. Initially for me, my journey was that initially I was looking at it as a marketing tool. Um, and that was uh, a failure for, my, for me on my part. Um, and when, when that perspective shifted from looking at it as a marketing tool, but rather a branding tool, and I, I use quotations for branding because I'd like to explain that a little bit more, that's when the magic started to happen. To me, branding really means reputation building and community building. And that's where I think the magic comes when it comes to social media and when it comes to being able to build out that profile. Because um, for us as healthcare providers, a lot of times we're uncomfortable marketing and selling, right? It's just kind of in our DNA to not be as comfortable with those terms and that idea as with other things. Uh, but when, for me personally, I started to view it as reputation building and community building, it started to get a lot more comfortable and it started to become a lot more organic and a lot more authentic because uh, I was viewing everything I was putting out there as engaging with my community and my community includes colleagues and dentists and you know uh, people I've met or haven't met but we we share that sort of dentistry as a common theme and my community is also my patients and the people that come to me for my services and people that trust me with the care of their smiles and their teeth and when I started viewing it from that lens as you know everything that I'm going to put out there is going to be tailored to building community and building my reputation towards my audience, um, that's where things kind of significantly shifted and, and, and significantly changed. And since then, it's just been a very enjoyable journey because I'm not looking at it from a marketing lens of, okay, well, I'm spending this number of hours. What am I getting in return? Instead, it's I'm utilizing this tool to be able to push and introduce myself at scale to people that uh, otherwise I would have probably never been able to reach. This is interesting because I feel like a lot of people kind of start their page and like, say you started at square one and you kind of see where it goes, where I'm feeling the prosthodontic vibes here in the sense that <laughs> I feel like what we do with case acceptance and treatment planning is we've kind of like an end goal in sight and we figure out how we want to get there. Is that kind of your approach? Yeah, a hundred percent. So it's it's to me, it's understanding why I'm doing something, and maybe that is the Ross mindset as well to what it is that we're doing. Because there's a hundred and ten ways to be able to get to that thing you're looking to get to, but it's just understanding what is it that you're looking to get to, and why are you doing the things that you're doing. So, with that perspective, with that lens, it just becomes a lot more authentic to be able to put out the things that you put out, to be able to share the things that you share. And to be able to add value, because at the end of the day, um, if we're trying to focus on reputation building and community building, the key word to successfully do either of those two things is to add value, is to understand who am I trying to add value to and what is it that I'm doing to actually add value. And actually add value is something that I think takes a little bit of um, looking within. Because, And again, and this is, of course, me speaking from my perspective. A lot of times we're very tempted to feed our egos with what we show on our pages, 
right? I want to show how great I am. I want to show that I know this. I want to show that I did that. And sometimes that's nice because it adds a layer of, you know, uh, relatability to other people and that sort of thing. But a lot of times it's purely just feeding our ego. It's purely putting out things that we want to see. And um, for me, one of the keys to being able to get to where we're going is trying to view things from the lens of, okay, what I'm about to put out there, how does it in any way add value to my audience or the people that I'm engaged with? Does it add value in any way? Because if it doesn't, then maybe it's not worth spending time on. And if it does, then it's definitely worth putting out there. And value isn't necessarily, you know, something specific. Value can be entertainment. Value can be inspiration. Value can be education. Uh, value can be introducing to a new concept. So there's a lot of ways we can add value, but I think it's viewing it from that lens where I want to add value to uh, to my network as opposed to what am I going to be able to get from the network that's there. Mm. So from a process standpoint, that all makes sense. But from an emotional standpoint, how, how were you able to kind of step back and say, gosh, if I post all these things, it is very ego driven, but it isn't bringing value. I mean, that's a hard, it's an easy conversation to have, but it's a hard thing for, I think, us as people to really truly follow through with? How'd you do that? I honestly don't think I fully have. That's the honest answer. It's uh, it's not something that I've fully been able to do, right? And I don't know if it's something anyone or at least myself, I don't know if it's something I'll ever be able to fully do. You know, I am biased by my ego. I am biased by what I want to see. But I think just being aware of it allows you to push more in the direction of adding value than the not. And uh, at least that's how I approach it. It's in the sense of, okay, but where is the value? And each time I'm asking myself that question, sometimes it's very clear and sometimes it's less clear. And when it's less clear, sometimes I pull away from that or I feed my ego and I just consciously make that choice, right? And um, at the end of the day, like it's not a, uh, it's, it's our, like each person's, again, each person's social media presence is their it's their reputation, it's their community. So they can choose to tailor that to however they see is, is best and however they're most comfortable. Um, but uh, when it comes to that, you're 100% right, David. It's like, it's easy to say. Now, whether it's easy to do or not is a different story. And at least for me on my journey, it's just continuously trying to be conscious of what I'm trying to do in terms of adding value and push more and more in that direction. Now you have almost 20,000 followers. At what point did you realize, all right, what I'm doing is actually starting to work and you're on to something like, was this something where, you know, early on, you're like kind of dialing it in and all of a sudden it kind of took off or is it something where you're like, you know what, this is what I want to see. This is me. And then all of a sudden it resonated with people. Like, what did that look like for you? Yeah, it's, um, Initially, it seemed like a complete waste of time, to be honest. And by initially, I mean probably a good solid two years, right, where I was trying to consistently put an effort to build that community, build that uh, reputation online, and was seeing zero in return. Um, and that, that's where it gets a little bit frustrating, I think. Um, that being said, to me, it really clicked when you start to see people actually coming to, like for me, from a patient perspective, I started to see patients specifically coming over to see me because they found me online. Um, and a lot of them will say that, you know, again, making a decision, especially as a prosthodontist, usually we're doing more complex treatments. Making a decision to transform your smile is probably not something you're gonna do on an impulse, you know, or seeing something all of a sudden and deciding I'm gonna do it. You're probably going to engage with, that information for a period of time, sometimes weeks, sometimes months, sometimes years, where you're just following silently and learning and raising your awareness and, and then making a decision as to when and if you want to take that next step forward. Um, so over time, what we started to see is people would come in and they would identify to us that they specifically found us online or found my profile online. But where it really clicked, felt like, wow, this there's something to this. You know, this is this is more impactful than I think most think, is a comment that was very often repeated to uh, my assistants 
when new patients would come to see us. And that comment was so frequently said that that's where it really changed things for how I viewed it. Um, so the way we have things set up is when new patients come to see us, they spend a good amount of time with our assistants first, you know, their intake, getting their information and so on. And once they're done with that, they explain to the patient, okay, well, I'm going to go grab Dr. Edher now and we're going to, you know, proceed with the next part of the consultation. And the comment that we would get so often was patients would respond to that saying, oh, yeah, I feel like I already know him. I feel like I already know Dr. Edher. And that's something that my assistants would very, like, I, I, I'm not exaggerating when I say very often, like it was kind of a repeat thing. And that to me is what sparked that, where it's like, okay, there, there's a huge value to this. When a patient walks into your practice, they've never seen you, they've never spoken to you. And they have a feeling like they know you, they know what you stand for, they know what your values are, they know what your treatment philosophies are, they know what your clinical focus and expertise is. That's amazing, right? That's, that's, that's a really powerful thing, and it makes a huge difference when it comes to um, who we're seeing, our patient acceptance rate, and so on. So that's really what did it for me. It's starting to hear those comments and understand that, okay, it's really not about the short-term turnover, but it's rather being able to build that reputation, be able to build that community where people feel like they are already engaged and they already know what you stand for. That's awesome. So you said something very telling in one of your more recent videos, and that is spotting winners is not rocket science. Watch how people behave. And I love that. And without us like going down a negative rabbit hole as we kind of wind down, what are some of the behaviors of channels that you look at and think, ooh, you only get you know, five to seven seconds maximum to make a great first impression. And boy, you're just not doing it with your behavior. What are some of those? Um, would this be for like, uh, like we're talking like team members or, or it could be general, a team like or a dent yeah, just, just in general. Um, I think, I think for me, one of the keys that I pick up on very quickly when I'm talking to people is getting a very quick sense of their uh, sense uh, or their their uh, their ability to take accountability. Um, that to me is a very big one and it's a very telling one. Uh, when people start conversations or start discussions, um, blaming others or maybe not even blaming others, but you know, sometimes let's say someone's trying to sell you something or, or it's an interview where you're looking to hire someone and they're one of their first approaches to things is to put others down in order to explain how good they are. Um, that to me is a very good indicator as to certain things related to their mindset more than anything else, yeah. um, which might not be the right mindset for, for us and, and what we look to do. Because um, we really try to focus on a mentality of me taking away from anyone does not add, any, does not add anything to me. And anything that I do is not going to take away from anyone else. And that seems like a simple mindset to have, but I find that it's actually very unique to find people that really truly believe in that mindset. And, and uh, that to me is very telling because a lot of skills, a lot of things can be learned, but there's some things that are just really deep to people's core, which can be changed, but sometimes takes a lot more effort to be able to get there. So trying to pick up on some of those signs early on saves a lot of, a lot of uh, effort and, and time. That is amazing. I will say one of my favorite things about this discussion today, and I hate that we don't have more time, is that you're talking about authenticity and you're talking about, you know, the fact that you put out good things in the world and you put out who you are and you don't stomp on those around you. You're just rising to the top and shining and it's working for you and for your patients. So I think that's inspiration for all of us. I would certainly love to have you back and talk about photography and actually like the nuts and bolts of how you do what you do. But I think you've given us a really good inspiration as to, you know, what we can do and what's the possibilities for us just by, you know, putting your heart out there and, you know, being who you are. And I really appreciate that. And I love who you are and I love who you are as a clinician. And obviously 
as a prosthodontist. So I can't thank you enough for your time today. No, thank you. This was, uh, this was fun. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you having me on. We're going to talk about one of our favorite topics, and that's the difference between, you know, maybe like an influencer, which can be good, can be bad, and dentists who have real influence. So I'm pumped because our guest today, Dr. Sonny Verdi, is a guy I would put in a bucket of a dentist who walks his clinical talk and as a result has amazing influence. So Sonny, welcome. Thank you guys so much for having me on the show. I'm very excited to be here. I look up to both of you and uh, I'm excited to be here. It's going to be a good topic. Awesome. Well, Cam. Mutual. Yeah, I feel you like, know. well, all right. So we were on earlier and you guys didn't get to hear this, but we were talking about influencers versus influence. And there seems to be a set clear kind of criteria between the two. One brings a little bit more, um, you know, let's say, you know, being genuine and, you know, maybe a little bit more authority and some just, you know, kind of look good for the gram. But then you mentioned, Sonny, that there's a third criteria or category with this whole world of influence. And I'm like at the, like on the edge of my seat, I want to hear, what is it? Well, I, I think that there's also, uh, there's dentists who uh, like influential dentists, but they don't have influence, but they should. Like, like there's some people out there who are, who are just incredible, um, but their message doesn't reach enough people. And I think it's important to recognize them as well, because oftentimes those are the people that have influenced the dentists with influence or influential dentists uh, and, and are changing, changing people's views and, and changing the way we do dentistry out there. Um, and there's also, there's also people who, who aren't online who are super influential. So when we, social media is such a, um, it, it, it sometimes takes up a lot of our, you know, mental capacity and we like tend to focus on it. And for some people, it's like their only resource for how they look at dentistry, for example. Um, so I think it's important to broaden our horizons and just remember that there's, there's more to it than just, than just followers. Are you saying there's a world outside of our phones <laughs> and social media? Is that yeah. even possible? That can't be. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Well, let's talk about your page, for example. So um, I definitely have some questions. Um, I guess, so your work speaks for itself. It's absolutely gorgeous. So, you know, anybody, you got to follow Sonny and check out what he's doing because he's always doing cool things. But I have to ask you about the locations that you tag. What is that? So, I mean, <laughs> we we just bought a house a few years ago and I, I was I was a sheltered child, like, you know, my vegan East Indian male growing up, my parents did a lot of stuff for me. And uh, when I went on my own, I, I, was, I didn't know how to do a lot of things. And one of them was cook. So we go to eat a lot so when we were working and, you know, call from work. And that's how I was like, let's go to eat. But whenever I do my Instagram post, I would do it from that restaurant that we were at. And I would just take the restaurant. And uh, at first, it was just like a little joke to myself. Like, I think anybody cared. But so many people would comment and like, that's so funny. And you know, it became like kind of a thing that people recognized me for. So yeah, I just kind of carried with it. And, and usually the one I post is that's what I either ate that day or the day before <laughs> or my last meal that I had. So it's just genuine restaurants that we go to. It's something Guys, fun. it's awesome. So you'll see this photo that's just like this piece of artwork at this close-up like veneer, like looks amazing. And then you just like, your eye all of a sudden goes to like, Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> I need to improve my diet a little bit. I, <laughs> I don't know. Listen, I just saw I'm something the on. other day. Some guy who's been only eats McDonald's and he dropped like 50 pounds. And I, I, maybe, I, maybe you're okay with the king. It could be okay. I, I work in a mall here. So, like, we have a ginormous food court and like there's like three food courts attached to my office. So, we, uh, yeah, we have a bit of a problem. No, I actually love it. I think it's a beautiful, it's, it's just funny and it's, it's, it's awesome. And it's like a juxtaposition between the work that you're delivering and, the, and your location. It's just, I think it's funny. So let's talk a little bit about your content and, you know, what kind of drives you to keep posting and doing what you're doing. And I think that there's also people who want to get to your level, maybe with photography. So where do we start? Tell us, you know, your story a little bit. So Paresh Shah, who you guys 
probably know of, uh, is a really yeah. close friend and a mentor of mine. And I met him. It's funny, like, you, I live in Winnipeg. And I don't know if you guys have ever been to Winnipeg or know where Winnipeg is. And not a lot of people do. But it was so cool to see a guy like Fresh and he's from Winnipeg. It just shows it doesn't matter where you live. You can do amazing things anywhere. Uh, and I got in touch with him. And, you know, we kind of clicked right away because we could see the passion I had. And he, you know, I see all these things online and I, and I didn't necessarily love dentistry when I started in my career, but I saw on social media, all these like cool pictures. And I was like, man, this looks so cool. Uh, I think that if I could do work like that, I would find that really fulfilling and it would like reignite my career and, and change the way I view dentistry. And it turned out to be the case. And, and one of the you know, ways I started was when I met Paresh, he was like, hey man, well, I'm actually going to this conference called DIA, the you know, Dental Influencers Alliance. And uh, you, you should come meet all these people. Like I, the, all these people posting are all friends of mine and uh, you should start an Instagram and let's go do it. So I was like, okay. And uh, I just started taking pictures. I had no idea what I was doing and, and I never delete any of my pictures. So if you scroll down the bottom, you see the clinician I used to be versus now. And it's really cool to see how your portfolio changes and how you change as a dentist. So I kept, I keep all that there for, so people can see that. Um, I look back and laugh at it, but yeah, it's part of the journey. So we started with that which was really fun. And then I went to DIA and met all these people and was like so inspired uh, and, and just kept posting about it. And I found that by posting my work online, it kept, it kept me very accountable because I was like, man, all my colleagues and friends are seeing this and, and patients follow me. So I want to hold myself to a standard that I'm proud of. And I just kept improving and kept learning and, you know, growing. So that was nice. Now for me, it's, it's a, almost like a responsibility, I feel that I see so much stuff out there that I'm like, this looks cool or is like maybe fun, but there's not context for people. Like they don't know whether there's literature backing this. They don't know if this is a follow-up, uh, how long is this going to last? Like there's tons of stuff out there. So me having, you know, whatever people who follow me and enjoy my work, I, I feel very responsible that I want to share things that I think are like clinically relevant and people can learn from and depend on in their practice and stuff that I do every day that I see follow-ups on that I, that I know is literature based. Um, and, and that's something I learned from my mentor, Presh, because he, he says that, you know, we, especially as educators, like we have a responsibility that you know what we're doing. And then we're also sharing that dependable information to all the people who are looking at what we're doing. So that, that's kind of what drives me now. Um, and, and then part of it is just fun. Like I've met so many friends, I you know seen you guys online, and you know you guys inspire what I do in part two. So yeah, there's that aspect as well. Well, I love that, and um, like I I feel that this for you is very passion based, you know. And then you add this process, the literature, which Pam, you and I, <laughs> we tend to bring literature into all the conversations we have, and I, <laughs> I love guess. it. On on the bright side, so I love what you're doing. So let's talk about the risks of social media. Like we're, again, you, you kind of alluded to like some people just post things and there's no, there's no framework to it. It could, you know, might look nice for a day, might not look nice, you know, 10, 20 years from now, but what's the downside? What's the risk? And, and so that's, I think people like, and, and sometimes you see things and it's almost like, you know, an easy way out or the patient's like, Oh, this person can't afford this. So we're doing this. And it's like, everything's fine. Like, as long as you're taking care of people, that's okay. But you don't know what conversations are happening behind social media. Like, you know, if you see a treatment that maybe you're like, I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, I mean, if the right conversations were had with the patient, cool, that's fine. But, but, but not everybody knows that. So they see something and they're like, oh man, this is amazing. Like, whoa, I don't have to send them for an implant. I don't have to send them for a surgery. Like we can do anything, uh, you know, throw a little bit of magic fibers on a tooth and, and everything's fine after but uh, you need to know the conversations and the risk factors involved with that for the patient. And I think that's the dangerous part is that people take a little snapshot they see and then they apply that to their whole, you know, practice philosophy. Um, so it's not to put anybody down. Like, you know, I think there's, there is a treatment for, like all treatments could be considered, you know, the right one for a patient, but it's about the conversations. And so if you don't know the risk factors, you don't know the treatment planning, you know, you're not aware of, of the whole system, that I, I think it can be dangerous for people, especially young clinicians. Like, you know, they're looking for this, like they may not have mentorship and they're like, this is what they're learning from, um, you need context. So that, that's the danger to me. And, I, and I've seen it happen and I've, I've seen, I get messages all the time from 
you know, I will say younger dentists for the most part, asking me like, oh, why didn't you do this technique? Like, why did you go through all this work to do this? And I'm like, well, I mean, if you look at the literature and all the risk factors in this patient, like, you know, this is actually the way that I would, I would prefer to treat them. And they're like, oh, I, I didn't know that. So yes, contacts is everything. That's excellent advice. So the photos that we're seeing on Instagram are sort of the tip of the iceberg. There's always a lot more to it and a lot more involved than just the photo that we might take at face value. So I know this is, we have such limited time together, but I want to hear from you when you're sitting on your couch, just sort of scrolling through Instagram, what, if, what kind of things do you like to see? And what are those things that like you kind of roll your eyes and want to mute? Hmm. The, the things I love seeing is when, when comprehensive cases and when they share the whole journey, it, I love to see that because for some, for some things, it's a little snapshot and you're like, this case took like three years, but, but on Instagram, you don't know that. So I love when they share the whole journey. So I'm like, that's the real dentistry, like that's sharing the real story about what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, and, and I also love, like, I'm a big fan of, we have amazing dentists here in North America, but I'm just in awe of like the guys in Italy and Brazil and Spain. And you're just like, yeah, this is ridiculous. Like this is, this is art, it's no longer dentistry. So, so that really inspires me. Um, the stuff that uh, makes me roll my eyes is <laughs> it's just when I see things that I'm like, you know, this, there's no, there is no literature behind what this is, but, but they add all these, you know, quote unquote facts behind this thing. Like this is the best way. This is the only way to do dentistry. You know, um, th this is how every patient should be treated. And, and they start to speak in absolutes and they kind of put everybody else down. That's the stuff I want to mute. I'm like, hey man, there's something for everybody out there. I'm nothing wrong. With, I think there's nothing wrong with what you're doing, but you shouldn't be putting down what everybody else is doing. And I think that's where, you know, it's, it's good for us to be critical so we can all learn. And we're not just like, rah, 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 great job. Even though maybe it was a great job. You know, we need to be still real, but we should be putting each other down. Let's support each other. It's a small industry and I think we can all grow together. True story. So one last question as we wrap up, like Pam said, I wish we had way more time. We're definitely going to have to drag you on here for a longer <laughs> session because you have so much to offer. I know a little birdie told me like you could be a Raptors fan on the NBA, but uh, what do you think of the NBA finals? Who's going to win? Man, I want the Heat to win so badly. What Jimmy Butler and his crew have done is the most inspiring thing. Like I, as soon as I saw Jimmy Butler after like that first series, I went online to buy a Jimmy Butler jersey and they were sold out everywhere. Like it is it's been amazing. A true underdog story, right? And everybody keeps doubting them and they're always the, you know, the underdog and they keep winning. So I'm going to see the Heat just to support. I think, uh, I think the Nuggets are, you know, probably just, the best team in the world and it's going to take a lot to beat them but i'm hoping that he and then next year the raptors but this year that he's going to have it's fine i love it i love it hey sonny thank you so much this has been super informative i love your honesty i love your passion i love that that's what drove you to build this channel and and thanks for bringing that third bucket that I think a lot of us know, but we don't talk out loud enough about is are the mentors that are out there the teachers that are out there who aren't socially active and have so much to offer. And yeah, I think probably the three of us could rattle off a short list of really strong people who, who taught us a lot of things, Pam. Oh my gosh. Taught us a lot of things that are like an unsung hero. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, for me, one of my dental heroes is Dr. Bob Chapman and, uh, he was, he's a prosthodontist and I worked with him in private practice as a hygienist. And he was part of my inspiration to become a prosthodontist. And I, he was a mentor throughout dental school and after, and he was interested in caries, like all the things. So I'd say probably at least at Tufts for me, Dr. Chapman and Dr. Virgo, probably Nancy Arbery, amazing people. And you won't see any of them on Instagram. Well, you know, that we're lucky to have people like you guys, because you guys are active out there and you guys have a, a very good, you know, base of knowledge and you guys are sharing with people like it, it's incredible. Like, that's what we need. Um, but probably even for the three of us, like our biggest mentor is like, don't have social media. So, you know, it's important to keep that in mind. I always tell the young people, like you got to work outside what's big and trendy. Like there are just core concepts that are never going to change and, and you got to learn from those people. True story.
Awesome. Sonny, thanks for being here. Pam, always good to see you. All right. So I'm extra, extra excited today. We're talking about like influencers, influence in dentistry, dentists with influence, and um, admittedly, selfishly, like one of my favorite dentists on the planet is here. That's Happens a big to be like honor. a super igniter. Dr. Tara, tell us a little bit about you. Welcome. Thank you so much. That's such an, a nice intro. I'm, uh, my head's going to get too big. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, Tara, I'm a, a de practicing dentist out in uh, Cincinnati and, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to be here and really honored to be with two of my favorite people in, in dentistry. Definitely. And it's an honor to be here. Well, well we're glad honors. you're here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Pam, ours. We so have lots of questions. So many yes. questions, so little time. So we're just going to fire away if that's, that's okay. Good. So if anybody follows you on Instagram, which I know a ton of people do, um, it's your Instagram's awesome. And I think in some ways you are doing what so many young dentists want to be doing. Like you're in with figs. Like how did that happen? I think that when, and, and David and I have talked about this a bunch of times when you are, um, as, as true to yourself as you can be. I think when I started my page, I told myself that I would try and stick to my personality and not change it because of what other dentists were telling me to do or any of that. I think that companies that stand by that, just being honest, will find you and reach out to you. Obviously I did some poking and prying and tagging them and things like that. Um, but that, that was like the core of it. Um, everything I post is because I like to be a little bit funny. I like to be a little bit witty and I like to show people, yes, I'm a professional, but I also know how to have a little fun with it. And I think that that's kind of how they got in contact with me. They saw that I was wearing their clothes and, and their scrubs and I loved it. And I, I was happy to show it off. And I think, um, that's kind of how it all started. So what does that look like now? Like, how does that work? So there's, I mean, there's a lot of, of perks. I mean, if, if you're on Instagram, you know, brands are going to be reaching out to you and that's all great. Um, my biggest advice for anyone who is doing it is only work with the brands that you believe in and that you actually use the products or care about the products. And, um, so now for me, um, it, it varies month to month, I would say, and how involved I am. Um, I, I by no means am like the figs ambassador at the top of the top, but I definitely, do get a lot of their products and um, spend a lot of time chatting with both their other ambassadors as well as their team members. Um, and again, this, I just love figs because they, if you wanted to be in touch with the CEOs, you absolutely could be. If you wanted to just hang out with them on a normal weekend, you totally could. And so um, I really value companies like that. And so weekly basis, I might get a pair of scrubs and they might say, Shh, this is coming out in two weeks. If you take a photo, great. If you don't, no worries, enjoy the scrubs. And that is genuinely what it's like. There's no push to post, but because people love the product so much, we love to post. That's phenomenal. So timeline, I know everybody's timeline is different, but I think sometimes people have this impression on Instagram, like, well, so-and-so is doing it. So I'm just going to jump in and do it. And if it doesn't happen right away, they get like really discouraged. What kind of a timeline did it take you to build like you and your presence there? So people noticed you. This one's a hard one because I still think to this day that I probably could be doing a little bit more. Um, but I think sometimes you got to limit yourself on what you want to do. Um, I actually didn't set a timeline for myself in, in that aspect. And the nice thing that's transitioned, and I hope this resonates with people is that now the number of followers don't really matter as much since reels and videos have come out because anyone can see those. And so you might have 5,000 followers, 2000 followers, but maybe 60,000 people get to see your video because it's so catchy. Um, so I would actually say, if you can steer away from now more than ever, the, the whole timeline window thing, because then it discourages you if you're not, you know, at X amount of likes and um, X amount of followers or X amount of brands, all of a sudden you think that you're less and that's not what it is. It's just that you haven't maybe made that reach yet. And consistency is the key. It's consistency is king in, in social media and it's hard. It is very hard to be consistent. Um, cause it's like taking on another job. 
Mm. Now your photos are so beautiful. Like, honestly, you look like you are like chilling in the California sun all the time. (laughs) And you mentioned you're in Cincinnati and we know that like, obviously that's not the same. So how do you do it? Do you like block a chunk of time to take all these awesome photos or like, are you just like born with the perfect lighting? Like what is that? Yeah. I am certainly not. And I would be lying if I said I didn't edit some of my, my uh, pictures, but um, again, another big thing, I, lighting is, is a key thing. Um, we, you know, it's important to capture the moments in an honest fashion, but you know, I take 10,000 photos before I'm happy with one. And and if anyone tells you otherwise, they are lying to you. Um, I just find it very hard to believe otherwise. Um, and maybe it's because I'm overly critical, but I, I obviously I have a chance to show my best self and I am going to do that. Um, and so I, you know, when I travel, I try to take photos. Then, um, I know what time of the day looks best in my apartment. I know what time of the day looks best outside. Um, the shade is your friend when the sun is out. Uh, so there are little tips and tricks there. And, and again, I would be lying if I said I didn't take 10,000 photos before I was happy with one. And, uh, oh, and also I do, so I work four days a week full-time as a dentist. Um, and I have one day a week that I work on things like Ignite and other projects that I'm really passionate about. And so I do take, you know, that day, maybe half the morning and I'll say, you know, maybe the week before I'll plan, okay, I'm going to do these four videos, five videos this morning, and then I'll take three photos, you know, a new pair of scrubs coming out or whatever deadlines. And then I'll give myself that time. And then I put it away. And, um, I like to schedule things out too on Instagram. So it's a really great feature. You can schedule out your, your posts, and then you don't have to think about it all week. Okay. We're running short on time. I have so many questions still. I'm not ready to be done with you yet, Tara. Um, <laughs> So first things first, do you have a goal? Like, are you just sort of doing it and like seeing what happens? Are you like, you know, I'm hoping that at some point this leads to blank. That's a tough one because I, I think ultimately my goal is for people to know who I am and, um, know what I'm doing. And especially for patients, I I try to gear most of my stuff towards, uh, patients and not so much dentists necessarily. Um, the hope is that when people walk into my practice or someday or where I work now and that they'll kind of know who I am before they know who I am. Um, we do things like fun sock Friday and it's kind of fun. Patients will, they catch on to it on Friday. Sometimes I'll have patients point out to me that they're wearing those socks and it kind of drops that third wall element and allows, allows for patients to just see who we are before they get to meet us in person. And, you know, I might be really serious in the operatory or maybe I'll crack a joke or two, but ultimately I am who I am. And, um, I don't like to change that for patients at all. Phenomenal. Okay. So on the flip side, you're a clinician most of the time and influencer other part of the time, do you ever get pushback from non-influencer clinician dentists who just say like, ah, oh, come on, Tara, what, what's the deal? I'm not going to lie. I kind of have strong opinions about this because in my head, and I know we're running short on time, but in my head, social media is going to happen whether or not I want to join in. And it has such a strong hold on society right now that, um, whether I enjoy it or not, it's going to continue to grow and I can either, keep doing amalgams or I can move forward and start using resin materials and the new products that are coming out and constantly growing with what's adapted. And so uh, my opinion on that is that it's free marketing. I know some dentists will pay, you know, whatever it is, the five to 10% of what their um, overall overhead and, and all that. Um, it's easy access for patients. Like how I I can't even count how many times patients have reached out to me and said, Hey, uh, you know, I want to call in. I just, yeah, I love your page and I would love to be a patient. Um, and I, I want to do Invisalign or whatever it is. And then I'll say, Oh, no, no problem at all. I'll have my front desk reach out to you. And what a VIP experience to have the office call you, uh, to, to make an appointment. So to me, the pushback and, and I understand patient privacy and I, I take all the right, you know, roads and alleyways to make sure that my patients who are, if any are on my page are comfortable. 
um, you're just missing out. You know, you're missing out on an opportunity to connect. And um, honestly, if if you're not willing to show your work because you're worried about being criticized, then you maybe just need to maybe there needs to be some changes in your clinical work too. And and that's scary and it sucks to be judged, but I just, I just think it's, it's, you got to keep the ball moving and you got to keep yourself adapting the same way you would to take CE courses. Okay. One more question. (laughs) What's the word on the Instagram street with all of these blue checks turning up on people that are not earning them in real life? Like I think it's the lamest thing ever. Sorry. My opinion. What's yours? I, I hate saying this, but I agree. Uh, So at first I was like, Oh, this is kind of cool. You know, you get to get the blue check, but I mean, call me, call me old school or whatever, but I I think you got to earn the blue check just like you would earn anything else. Um, I actually haven't done it either. And I don't know, maybe I'll turn and do it, but I just, I hate the idea of having to pay for the, um, notoriety, you know, and it's, I don't, I think it's like 15 bucks a month or something. And I have not turned, I might. Uh, so I, I hope I don't regret saying all that I am, but I think if everyone has it, it kind of takes away from the point of it being exclusive. I, I bet something new is going to come out there. You get a double check. If it's, you're like, the mega <laughs> so I don't know, but I'm sure they're going to have to come up with something. Cause it's, it's kind of, kind of lame. I don't know. It's the who's who of dentists, right? You could just buy your plaque if you want to and put it on the wall. Exactly. <laughs> can I roll my eyes any harder? I'm sorry. Like I can't. No. Then you can post about that. All your who's who plaques. Yes. But true. Unreal. I'm with you, both of you ladies. I think, you know what? We live in, in a world today and you may or may not love social media. But you have two choices. Put your head in the sand because the world's going to keep spinning, whether you like it or not, or get involved, get engaged and start building patient relationships before someone ever walks in the door. I think it's brilliant. Pam, final thoughts. Agreed. Tara, where can we follow you, find you, see you, all the things? Oh, that's awesome. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, I'm on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, Dentara is my um, Instagram name. I'm always available anytime. And I can't tell you what truly, I know I've said it over and over, what an honor it is to be on a podcast with you two. You guys are two of the best people in the dental field. And uh, I'm I'm really grateful to be here. Yeah. Hearts all around for you guys. <laughs> oh man. I got to do it too now. <laughs> yeah, you this do. Like a sh- <laughs> squatty heart. That's as good as I go. <laughs> it's a manly heart. I like it. That's very powerful. All right, Tara. Well, thanks for joining us. I know we'll see you again. Everybody look out for Dentara on Instagram and tell figs we need more hot pink. So, all right, we'll see you soon. Cheers guys. Thank you everyone for watching or listening to the show this week. And thanks to our guests and sponsors on this episode. Please check out our social media at Dr. Pamela underscore Maragliano and at Dental Economics Official. Or you can check me out at Ignite DDS or at Dr. David Rice. And go to dentaleconomics.com to receive dental economics. You can choose to receive DE in print or digitally, and you can also get the details of our Principles of Practice Management Conference on our website. If you have topics or guests or anything you'd like to talk about on the show, send us an email to dentistryunmaskedpodcast at gmail.com and we will do our very best to make it happen. Thanks again and we'll see you next week.